The first question that arises is where to start carving. Which would be the ideal option? To remove the skin all over the ham, start slicing and combine slices from different parts of the jamón to make the perfect batter. There are four different flavors, four different aromas in any given jamón. For home consumption, it is always the best to start with the shank, la maza. In order to start carving, we will need different tools, which I consider to be a good carver's best friends. We need three knives, one for the rind, another small to separate the bones, and the classic jamonero knife, a long, thin, bladed and flexible knife, in order to reach everywhere and optimize the product as much as possible. We take the knife with the wide blade and make a small cut two fingers above this small bone. As you see, we will be removing the rind as we consume the ham. The temperature is very important when tasting an Iberian ham. We have two different temperatures to take into consideration. One for the conservation, between 14 and 18 degrees centigrade, and another one for the consumption, between 20 and 24 degrees. It is extremely important in order to obtain optimum organoleptic sensations. As you can see, we make a fine cleaning, but only of the area we are going to consume. Exhaustiva, pero solamente de la zona que vamos a consumir. Iremos desechando. The first rushes of fat are not to be served, but we keep them aside to cover the ham and to preserve it once we have finished cutting. Se encuentre en las mejores condiciones de consumo. So that the next day it will still be in the best conditions for consumption. As you can see, we do not apply any pressure, but slice the knife smoothly over the meat. To me, this is the perfect slice. Very thin, transparent, ideal. The aroma is really amazing. With this small slice of ham, we can fully enjoy a good thin cojotas. As we place pressure on the fat, we can see how easily it melts, which indicates quality. And now we are going to use the short, sharp bladed knife, called puntilla, to marcar. Marcar is to cut around the bone so we can separate it from the meat in order to optimize the product. Why do we do this? First, the thin, flexible knife will not touch the bone when slicing, so the slice comes out lean. And second, and more important, to make the most of this meat stuck to the bone. As you can see, since we have cut around the bone with the small knife, once we get to the bone area, the slice jumps. The long knife does not touch the bone, and it is much easier for us to carve this Cinco Jotas ham. Now we take off the skin covering the next area to be carved, repeating what we did at the beginning. We will do this the same way and we will clean as we consume the product. Why do we make this little furrow? For two reasons. First, aesthetics. And second, and more importantly, because the furrow will retain some natural jamón oil that we will spread on the jamón before covering it up for the next carving session. Once we reach the hip bone, we take again the knife puntilla and we continue removing the bone, which will help with the carving. Once we have reached the bone area, so here, as you can see, and here, we touch the bone. We will incline the knife in order to carve as much as we can from the shank, la maza. We will uncover the butt part or flank. Contra maza. Once we have cleaned all the external area, we will get rid of this little bone, 
which is the meniscus, the knee. Once we find it, we follow the bone towards the femur and we twist the wrist so the knife will end up in this position. Then we lever. We should not force it. The right way of doing it is twisting and then levering. Well, once we have gotten rid of this little bone, our work will be much easier, the carving much more comfortable, and most of all, we will not have the classic curve that usually appears in this area. We take the small knife again to marcar once more. It is simply to separate the bone area in order to make our task easy and to optimize the product. Now, as when we continue carving, the slices come out easily, making the job much more pleasant. As you can see, this area has fewer infiltrations, much less fat accumulated between the muscle fibers, but still a very appetizing part of the ham. We are about to finish the ham, so we are going to optimize the area of the knuckle, jarrete, the great unknown part of the ham. We turn the ham a bit, a bit inclined, so we are able to cut wider slices. This is a part of the ham that leaves such good sensations in the mouth. The flavors remain. As you see, if we turn the ham a bit, we can carve very appetizing slices. Last part, but not the least, is the knuckle, el jarrete. As you can see, we are going to take out this little bone by using the puntilla, this little knife. And now, we simply make a... We can either slice it, either cut small chunks from this area. Delicious! That's it. We have just carved the four different parts of this jamón, optimizing, making the most of this cinco jotas. If we combine purity of the race, Aikon's diet, the savoir-faire of the people from Jabugo, we obtain a cinco jotas ham, which is a real Spain's national treasure.